to me, I'm just grateful. I'm extremely grateful um, to be given this opportunity and um, just want to make a difference more than anything. Um, and obviously a, a massive honor for me and, and my family. So they yeah, are extremely grateful and, and excited for, um, for what's to come. Donning the green and gold is an honor bestowed on only a few but a privilege even more elusive is leading the Springboks onto the field of battle. As the 58th man to do so, Warren Whiteley has been tasked with the responsibility of returning the box to the summit of international rugby. Having played rugby from an early age in Durban, his love for the game grew and with it, the ambition to achieve higher honours. I wouldn't say I was a star. I mean, no one ever told me at school that I would be a Springbok or that I would play for the Springboks one day. It was, my ambition was to play for the Sharks. I mean, that was my, my big dream. Um, growing up, Henry Honeyball was my absolute hero, and um, that, was, that was probably my ambition, to become, um, to play for Natal and be a Shark, and I didn't think I was good enough to, to make it any further. That was kind of what I thought would be my ultimate, is just to play for Natal. With encouragement from his coach, Whiteley's first taste of leadership came at high school when he was named captain of the first team at Glenwood High. Actually the first time I'd ever captained a side was um, our first team. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Our um, first team coach, Mr. Hortop, a uh, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal coach, also a phenomenal person. He played for Natal back in the day. Um, yeah, and he was all about just enjoying it and, and having fun and the, the true spirit of, of the game, about camaraderie and brotherhood and playing for each other. So I really did learn a lot from him. And that was a special time for me. I really enjoyed um, my high school. Um, got some fond memories of the Green Machine. He then attended Pekka, but found the balancing act between school and sport difficult. With the support and encouragement of his family, he decided to turn all his attention to rugby. Coach Swayce, who's with, with, with the Lions at the moment, um, heard about it and, and, and managed to, to, to squeeze me in there at late notice, about halfway through the year. And um, Ian Ardendorf, who's um, a fond friend of mine and um, one of my best friend's fathers, um, coached collegians and I managed to get in there on the a 20 side and um, it, was, it was a smooth transition. Stayed with my grandparents on the bluff which was fantastic and yeah it, I mean it, it was quite easy for me to, to slot in into a familiar environment you know back, back in Durban. Having played for the Sharks at under 21 level, Whiteley found himself in the Super Rugby and Curry Cup squads but couldn't break into the first 15. Hoping to improve his game, he opted to play for Eastern Province for four months. Upon his return to the Sharks, he was informed that he would not be contracted the following year. Fortunately, Dick Muir gave him a lifeline at the Lions. Following a tumultuous period for the Lions, Whiteley formed a great bond with Johan Ackermann and was subsequently named captain, a feat he never envisioned. I didn't even envision it at the time when I, when I joined the Lions. Um, I mean, it, I was, uh, Coach Akis, I knew, believed in me as a player. Coach kind of brought me in and said, look, would I, would I like to be captain and, and lead the side in the, in the Vodacom Cup? Um, because we were, you know, we were relegated out of Super Rugby. Room on the blind side. Interestingly That's enough, they've got Jonathan Rainsberg directly behind the scrum. He's run right now. Oh, and Bondicio has picked it up. Good ball. Good go all the way with his strength here. All the Lions need to do is get that ball back. Whitey! We really took that competition seriously, and um, that was probably when when everything started, I would say. When, when the vision and the goal um, and our culture really started to to lay a foundation that um, you know that we're reaping rewards from today. Matters continued to look up for Whiteley. A short stint with the Blitzbocker proved decisive in his quest to don the green and gold. It was the first time in my life that I'd ever put on a national jersey of any sort. 
and um, that made it really special for me and um, it really ignited I would say belief within myself um, that I you know perhaps wanted to be a springbok and that I not that I wanted to that I could that I could actually be a springbok if um, if I put my mind to it and I, I believed more into, uh, in myself with that belief cemented he continued to work hard and his efforts culminated in a memorable call-up to the Springbok side in 2014. It was definitely a memorable debut. I mean, any debut is memorable. Um, but the circumstances were um, a bit unusual. Um, there was, I was going to go onto the field. I think there was probably about 20 minutes to go. And unfortunately, we got a yellow card. Brian uh, got a yellow card. And of course, I couldn't, couldn't go onto the field and I had to wait. And only once the 10 minutes um, were over, um, I could basically join, join, join the team on the field. So, I, geez, I, I don't know, maybe I played about 46 seconds. <laughs> Fittingly, his first test try came at Emirates Airline Park. I scored my first test try um, at Ellis Park, um, which was very special. All my family were there, uh, friends, family, my wife, my daughter, so it was a very special moment for me. Two leave it! Best made an early challenge over the ball, quickly cleaned out of the way. De Toy and De Klerk, Wykley, beautiful stepping from Wykley try! A first test try for Warren Wykley. After four successful seasons at the helm of the Lions, Whiteley's outstanding leadership earned him the call from Alistair Kutsia. Now, all eyes are on the new captain of the green and gold as he shoulders the responsibility of restoring the pride of the Springboks, a challenge he relishes. Some people might say it's, it's high pressure, but I, I, I love that. I love making decisions on the field. It's, um, you know, it's a lot like, like playing chess, you know, it's back and forth. So. It is a game at the end of the day that we are playing and um, that's one part of it I really enjoy.